Okay, in this particular uh, demo, we're going to have a look at using the emulator, um, Android emulator. It gives us uh, a mechanism to uh, to test and to explore our um, our Android programs, obviously. And we'll also have a brief look at um, also how we can connect our, our phone or our tablet up as well if we want to deploy uh, to an actual device. So th this is where we left off last time. We have uh, a clip set up. We put an SVN. Um, I need to have something obviously to run. So I'm going to very quickly uh, just take out a, uh, a project from uh, an SVN. And this will give us something that we can actually run. Uh, so this is a easy, quick way of, of creating uh, a project. So there we go. We have something. We can now run this. Now, how do we run it? So in this, we've got two options. We can use an emulator or we can use an actual device. So we'll have a look at the emulators first of all. We can get access to these if we go to Window and then to Android Virtual Device Manager. And we open that. And it will show whatever emulators we have created in this particular machine. So we don't have any yet. And um, we can have as many as we want, and we can, uh, if you like, emulate old uh, tablets or, or very new ones, whatever you fancy. So let's go ahead and create one. So we'll click on Create, and it brings us up a screen where we um, can specify all the information we need to for it. So let's say my um, first tablet. First, you can put in spaces. I'm going to give it a device that we're basing it on then. So there's, there's a range of, of different devices here, differing in terms of their screen size and, and the resolution. We'll pick a fairly standard 7-inch tab. So this is the Nexus 7, the 2012 edition. So 7-inch tab at uh, 800 by 1280 uh, dimensions. Um, the target then is what we're running on this particular device, which version of Android. So these are the ones we have installed. So we'll we'll go ahead with um, KitKat, so 4.4.2. So it's Linux 7, 2012, running KitKat. And then you say what type of hardware we have inside the uh, Linux 7. Now, we only, we only installed the Intel uh, images as opposed to the Intel and the ARM ones. So Intel is the only one we have available. Well, that's fine. That's the ones we'll, we'll, we'll use in an accelerated mode. Um, hardware present, keyboard present, yes, laptop. You can skin it. If you want to to give others uh, some control around it for, for keys, I normally go for no skin. Um, front camera, if you wanted to, you actually can use your, your webcam and take a feed from that. I'm just going to say none in this case. How much memory are you creating on the device? Uh, how much internal storage do you have? Do you have a, uh, you want to emulate an SD card for external storage? I'll emulate a truly massive 64 megabytes uh, SD card you happen to have lying around. Uh, Two emulator options at the bottom, Snapshot and Use Host GPU. They're quite useful, though we're not going to get both of them, unfortunately. So if we have Snapshot enabled, uh, it means then that um, the, the state will persist from different runs of the emulator. So if I have opened a bunch of things in the emulator and I, I can close the emulator down, next time I start it up, they'll be back where I left uh, it off at. And for the Use Host GPU, um, it basically uses the GPU you have available inside your laptop or your, your PC to, to accelerate uh, the draw requests on the emulator. And you really want that turned on because it's very slow without it. So you might want to sort of click on both, but you'll find out, unfortunately, at the minute, you can't do both. So we'll, um, we'll just go for Use Host GPU. There is a warning at the bottom about um, too much memory and, and one gig's it's just warning. I've never ever had any issues with that, but your experience may differ. If you do, you can just reduce it down if you want to. So we'll say OK. And that uh, creates us for our first um, tablet. Um, and we can then start that by obviously hitting Start. Now, a few useful launch options. We get the, uh, the size of 800 pixels by 1280. And I think by default, this is normally off. If you want, you can scale the display to real size. If you don't click that, if that's not clicked on, you will get a window 800 pixels by 1280 just displayed on your screen. If you turn this on, then it says, OK, we're emulating a 7-inch device. 
what is the, the DPI of your monitor? And you need to work that out based on the uh, size of your, your screen and the actual resolution of it. And it will then scale um, the, the emulator's display so that it takes up about seven inches, in this case, of actual space on your screen. And that's useful because you get a feel then for how big things actually will look like um, in, in, in on whatever device you're running it. So we will scale it and we will launch it. A certain emulator, it's nice to see the, move this over a little bit, the hacks thing appearing. It means it's running in fast virtual mode. And then this is the same as turning on the emulator for the first time. You actually get a lovely boot up screen. So it, it is the full emulator experience, including startup. You don't miss anything in terms of the emulator. Um, and unfortunately, you'll, you'll get used to just seeing that every single time you're using it. We also are getting, because it's the first time we've notionally turned this emulator on, we, we get the, the default Android sort of help screen. So we can just click on those. And th there'll be a few of those about. Uh, for example, there choose some maps. don't really matter. But in essence, we have um, our emulator up and running. And I'm using the mouse here to, to sort of swish through and to uh, click on it. We can run our settings and you see the different settings on it. So for all intents and purposes, we are emulating a 7-inch uh, Nexus 7 running KitKat on an Intel processor. Uh, and we can see how our programs would actually deploy um, to this. Once you've got up and running, and, and you can just leave it running in the background. So I could go back to... Uh, clips, I can close this down then. I can be sitting coding here. Anytime I run then, um, it'll deploy the emulator. I can bring it back on screen. So, so far, so good. The other option we have is actually connecting a real Android device. Could be a phone, could be a tablet uh, to your machine. It's very easily done, but there's a little bit of, um, I'm not sure the right word for it, but there's a little bit of, of setup is needed on the phone. In the most, the last number of versions of Android, developer options are not turned on by default within the phone. In fact, they're a, they're a hidden feature within the phone. So if you want to enable uh, developer options on your phone, and you do want to enable it, because that means you can then deploy your programs from your laptop or your PC onto your phone for testing them, you need to turn that on within the device. How do you do that? Well, you in stock Android, you go to settings, you go to about and uh, about the phone and you'll see a build number displayed. Uh, whenever you see the build number, um, you then want to press on that seven times. Seven times is the magic number. After the second time you press on it, you actually will see a little countdown appearing. That will count down to the seventh time where it will then congratulate you and say that you've unlocked uh, developer options on your device. Um, exciting stuff. Depending upon the phone, the tablet you're using, if you can't find the build number, just Google uh, and see whereabouts it is found on your device. But you do want that turn on. Um, then it's just a matter of connecting it to your, your PC using a USB cable. And uh, you'll have it registered, available as a device, and you can then deploy your programs uh, to that. If we want to um, see and, and to explore the devices we have connected. There's a, there's a handy uh, tool that's available in Eclipse uh, enable us to do this actually as perspective. So we want to open up a perspective and to go to DDMS. Stands for Davlik Debug uh, Monitor Service. Um, Davlik being the, the runtime uh, all the way up to KitKat with Android L is now replacing Davlik with a new runtime. But we do OK here, opens up a new perspective, and we can see all of the different um, devices that we have available. So this is our emulator that we've created. If we plugged in an actual phone or an actual tablet, we would see that there. If we started up more than one emulator, we would see it there. So this shows us um, all of the uh, deployment options that we have for the different devices we can deploy to. This is an extremely useful uh, screen when you get down into debugging. Uh, your program. So just to, to flag up a few useful things. If you, if you pick a device, you can then go up to screen capture and you can get a snapshot from whatever being displayed in the screen of your device. So if you're deploying to your actual phone and it's curious behavior and you want to send me a screenshot of it, well then just go into DDMS and click on screen capture and you'll, you'll pull across the actual contents of the screen. You can email that through. Options over here, you can see the threads that are running. 
You can have a look at the memory uh, within the uh, your, your, your device in terms of heap storage, um, other things you're allocating. You can actually explore the file system and have a look at your the contents of it. On the emulator, you're actually allowed to look at really any of the bits of the file system. On a phone, it still does protect it, um, so you only can see your, your file system for whatever application you're deploying. Uh, for the actual emulator, you can, if you want, uh, uh, spoof incoming voice or SMS messages. You can spoof your location if you want to. Um, so it's quite a lot of, of, of control that you have over these, and you, you can look at how the, the device is, is being used. Uh, so quite a useful thing um, to do. Right, so last thing we want to look at is how do we run uh, to the, the emulator? I'm going to go back to our, our, our Java perspective. And um, there's a couple of ways we can do it. We can do run and just then do run or just hit the control F11 or debug it. You can right click and you can down to run as, but we'll just do run. Whenever you pick run, it'll It'll build the, 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 the particular project, um, and then it will be launching it. Launch sort of appeared down here. And if we go back now to our, our tablet, it is running the particular program that we have um, launched. So maybe if I shift these over here so we get to see a bit of side by side. So we have our tablet available over here. DBMS, um, if we wanted to, we, we could actually check to see what's going on, but we'll go back here. So we will run it again, it will deploy it, and then it will fire up on it. And, and depending upon the size of the project, it takes longer to deploy or not. You will see a bunch of messages coming from the, uh, the device, and you can actually monitor those messages. And one of the later talks, we'll have a look at how we can log what is happening, and we can log uh, messages back to here, including warning messages. But in essence, that's all that's involved. If we had more than one uh, device attached, so say we had an emulator, an actual phone, whenever we did run, we would actually get an option being displayed to say, well, okay, which device do you want to deploy to? And you can you can pick if you want to deploy to the emulator or to deploy to um, an actual device. But it is as simple as that. Um, very, very easy, very easily done. So hopefully if you use. Uh, next few talks, we'll have a look at how to get SVN set up. So you'll need that as a team by way of um, enabling you to, to share your, your project from one member to the next.